Sakir Starmer has vowed to treat people smugglers in the same way as terrorists. That's if he wins the next election. The Labour leader has today set out his promise to smash the evil criminal gangs, making a mockery of us all, as he announced plans for an agreement with the EU's policing body to get to grips with the chaos at the borders. He's been in the Netherlands with his shadow home secretary today for talks with the bosses at Europol. Joining me now, Conservative MP John Redwood and Don McTurner, the former political secretary to Tony Blair. Uh, good, good afternoon to you both. Let's start with John Redwood here. I think some people, John, will be delighted, encouraged to hear that Sir Keir Starmer actually has a plan because from Rishi Sunak we hear repeatedly, I'm going to stop the small boats, no more small boats, that's the end of the boats. And yet every day we hear yet more, yet more are arriving, a grand total of more than ever before. So maybe this will be a welcome relief. Well, it's good news that Labour thinks that they ought to say that they want to stop this evil trade. But of course, uh, very many measures that the Conservative government have been putting in uh, to reduce, and we hope then stop the small boats arriving, have been blocked or opposed by Labour and by their friends in the Lords. And it's made it considerably more difficult for the government. I don't know what he means when he says he's going to treat them like terrorists. And if, if he means by that, uh, that he's going to tell the police on both sides of the channel that they have to take this very seriously and treat it as a priority. I can assure him that this government has been saying nothing else <laughs> to uh, our French partners and friends uh, throughout this crisis. And there's been a lot of money spent and a lot of meetings it's held to uh, stress the French point. police that we, we wish them to help us enforce these measures because, of course, the simplest way of stopping the small boats is to stop them leaving the shores of France in the first place. And that is a matter for the French police. Well, let, let's ask John McTinnon a, you know, a similar question. If indeed I asked a question, I did make a statement, didn't I? I said many people will consider this to be proactive. They will consider it to be something that sounds more plausible and sounds as if it could be more effective than simply putting up posters and issuing the statement, stop the small boats, I'm stopping the small boats, I'm really going to stop them. And yet we hear day in, day out, more and more are arriving. Um, but then, of course, we hear John Redwood say, don't think that that isn't something that's already being done. What does it even mean to treat uh, people people smugglers like terrorists. It's not as if the police haven't already been alerted to all of this. So what's Sir Keir Starmer saying and does it have any actual substance? Look, I think the thing Keir is saying is, you know, he's been in charge of smashing criminal conspiracies. He's been a director of public prosecutions. He's dealt with terrorism, terrorism. He's dealt with terrorists. He's jailed them. He understands the war of intelligence that's required, as well as, on the other hand, you have to be absolutely clear we need to find a way to provide safe routes. And at the moment, we have a situation where John Redwood's uh, uh, party and John Redwood's government, the Tory government, are trying to say, and they passed a law actually, to say, you cannot come to Britain and claim asylum or claim refugee status. Now, there are people coming to Britain, as you said, Vanessa, um, they keep on coming on the boats. They have been deprived of their right to be refugees or asylum seekers. Um, there's nowhere to return them to if they don't have a claim but there's nowhere for them to make a claim now. Keir is saying we have to cooperate with Europe, with the European Union. I know that's a problem for John, probably, but, and a problem for the Tory party. We have to cooperate with our closest neighbour, the European Union, uh, on returns policies, on enforcement policies, on intelligence, on policing. And I think um, Europol and, you know, later on, uh, on this on this international visit, I think uh, Keir is going to meet President Macron. I think European partners are happy to finally meet uh, a British politician, one who I hope will be Prime Minister, but a British politician who wants to meet and cooperate with Europe rather than just stand and abuse Europe. And I think that's the kind of uh, the thing that's being projected here is Labour have to be the alternative government, despite the fact this government don't appear to wish to govern at all in any way. Well, let me bring John Redwood back into this, of course. Um, are you are you um, in agreement with what John McTinnon has just said? Or do you feel that uh, this government is taking the right stand in not meeting Macron about this, not meeting the Dutch about this, and carrying on doing what's been going on so far? I mean, the Blairites are very good at spin, and, and they've obviously picked up from their polling that what the Prime Minister is saying and seeking to do with the Home Secretary is very popular, uh, but the public are obviously frustrated it hasn't worked more quickly. Part of the reason it hasn't worked quickly enough uh, are the legal processes and the uh, resistance to a strong law in Britain that the Labour Party was part of. Uh, but the Prime Minister and, and the Home Secretary are quite clear that 
they trust that the courts will, will back the scheme that has been put forward. And once there is a safe place to send people who've made illegal crossings into Britain to, um, that will reduce a lot of the pressure for people to come here illegally. It sounds now, it's quite as if untrue it, 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 it sounds John as if that we haven't made safe routes available. There are plenty of safe routes, and a lot of people have come here legally. But we wish to stop all the illegal arrivals. Um, Labour now say they like that, but they don't want to wish the means to do so, which are the means that we've set out and need strengthening. And what Labour is also saying is that they want to take in a lot more people who have arrived in the EU illegally as part of a deal, which is not the answer. Uh, that would make the problem worse. John McTinnon, um, Keir Starmer wants to abandon the Rwandan solution. Well, certainly it hasn't proved to be much of a solution to anything thus far. He's going to knock that on the head completely, isn't he? Yes, he is. If, and the problem with this government is... Yes, I think he will. Uh, if he gets the chance. And, and the problem with the current government is uh, they're incompetent. They can't actually stop the votes. Worse than that, they're immoral. They want to deny refugee uh, and asylum seekers the opportunity to, to claim that, that status in our country. And we're a warm hunted country and we're open to, to refugees and asylum seekers. But absolutely worse than that, they're cruel. They are cruel and incompetent. The Rwanda, the Rwanda scheme isn't working. If it were working, it would take up to 140 people. But if it were working, it would take 140 people who were seeking a refugee and asylum status in the UK and would be told you can be a refugee or an asylum seeker in Rwanda. You may well have been a translator for the United Kingdom, a translator in Afghanistan, supporting our troops, supporting NGOs or charities, working in the British interest, and you might have got here with your family, but we will give you the status of a refugee in Rwanda. What a way to treat people who've worked for Britain in the British interest, who have worked for us and, and who love our country and have come here because they, they love Britain. Well, you We're might be you might be country. someone who worked as a translator. You equally well might not be. Um, John Redwood, you were shaking your head. Why were you doing that? Well, I'm just ignoring the fact that we've had a scheme which has welcomed a lot of Afghans here and we've been particularly keen to look after those who, who serve British forces and the uh, wider alliances in that terrible conflict. And so it's just completely false to say that they can't come. We want them to come legally by the legal routes that are available. Uh, and we don't want them risking their lives and paying lots of money to these dreadful people running these extremely dangerous boat services. All right, let me bring into the conversation immigration lawyer Harjep Singh Bangal, who's with me here in the studio. Thank you for coming in. Uh, you hear both these gentlemen and what they have to say, obviously diametrically opposed in what they are saying. You're the person, uh, to use the cliche, on the ground. You're actually dealing with these people. They're not some kind of concept to you. They're real. You see them every day. They're part of your daily life. Where do you stand on all of this? Well, I think if we're going to analyse, let's look at the figures. Under a Labour government, we were sending 60,000 people back a year. That has whittled down over two years to last year. It's only 3,000 enforced removals. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if people are coming, we're not sending back the ones who don't deserve to be here or shouldn't be here. They're staying here. Now, 60,000 people coming here a year isn't a problem if you're sending 60,000 back. The problem is when 60,000 people come here a year or cross on small boats and you're sending back 3,000. All right, well, what has gone wrong? You're the person presiding over this, um, you know, seeing the kind of orchestration of, of how people are processed, where they're put, why they're allowed to stay or told they must go. What's gone wrong? What's changed? If well, it, was, it used to be six. 60,000, now it's 3,000. Why? Quite a few things have changed and quite a few things have gone wrong. Every year, the Home Affairs Select Committee reports to Parliament that the Home Office is not fit for purpose. It's a machinery that's not fit for delivering a product which it's supposed to do, i.e. processing claims. We're waiting over two years for a decision. Now, in, when I first started immigration law in 2001 and 2002, we used to decide these claims in 15 days. There was a fast track system at Harmonsworth, right near Heathrow, where if you'd come on a Monday, by the next Wednesday, your claim would be dealt with and you'd get a decision. Even if you appealed, there was a court actually in the detention centre. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to wait a year. Your appeal would be the week after. So what happened to change that? Well, in, this, in their wisdom, this government decided to abandon the fast track system. Yeah. What happened is there was the infrastructure has deteriorated. There's no quick decisions anymore. There's no decisions in 10 days. It takes a year or a year and a half to decide a claim which essentially a trained person mm -hmm. can decide in half a day. We've got gap year students 
deciding Home Office claims. And when decisions are made, they're then appealed. 50% of those decisions are decided to be wrong anyway. So this, this is what's happened. The machinery and infrastructure is finished. There's no a returns system. And also, when we negotiated a certain agreement, we somehow, this government, forgot to negotiate return agreements with individual countries. We should have 200 return agreements with individual countries. We have six over seven years. And therefore, we can't send people back unless we have a returns agreement with that country. Well, let's bring John River back into this conversation. So you hear this is this is a lawyer dealing with immigration. This is what he does day in, day out. It used to be a certain way, streamlined, quick, with a court right there. You heard him describe it. It's not anymore. And he says the fast track um, option abandoned by the Conservative government. So what was the reason for that, John Redwood? Well, I, I thought I was listening to a Conservative minister because they have been making exactly the same criticisms about the lack of productivity, the long time it takes to settle the cases and the inaccuracy of some of the settlements. And they've put a lot of extra people and a lot of extra money behind the system uh, to try and speed it up. And so those criticisms are entirely fair. And the management is now being strengthened to try and get better results. I have no idea why the productivity collapsed and why it started to take so long. Um, no minister ever wanted a long waiting list. And as soon as they were aware of how serious the problem became, um, they, they made it their number one priority and they put a lot of extra resource in. Let's bring John McTernan back into the conversation. I mean, you know, when you have John Redwood agreeing that it has been a, a pretty disastrous state of affairs and a constant stream of you know, decisions which have contributed to this terrible backlog and everything else, um, I suppose you enjoy listening to it, but what do you have to say next? So, so I thought we had a very fair description of how the system was under Labour and how it's turned under the Tories. I also think we need to focus on uh, what's going on because it is a test of competence. Can you manage your bureaucracy? John was right. More resources have been thrown at this. What's happened is, in, in March, uh, April this year, Home Office civil servants were processing 13, one, three cases a week. Additional resources were given to them, and now they're processing seven cases a week. There's a catastrophic failure here, mm -hmm. and it cannot be blamed on the civil service. No, it has well, let's to be speak to the person the who knows what it can be blamed on because he's sitting right next to me. So you heard those figures, you made a face. Why? It's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you've given a job, and the Home Office, if it was a private organisation, people would lose their jobs. Instead, you've got people getting bonuses. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, I, I just can't believe the level of competence that has under this government, whether it's through lack of political will, we'll never know. Whether it's just through, where is this money going? Money is being put into a system like the Rwanda scheme. We've actually had more Home Secretaries visit Rwanda than actual refugees go to Rwanda. So it's a waste of time. The barges don't have the capacity. We need to do something and we need to work with our European counterparts. That much is a given. I think Keir Starmer has looked into it and he's hit the precise sort of things really he said which technical people will appreciate the gangs mm -hmm. you've got to stop the gangs i always say you can't stop drug dealing by locking up drug users mm -hmm. which is in effect what this government is attempting to do we're trying to lock up refugees in the hope that people smuggling will stop that's not going to happen gentlemen i have to stop you there i'm afraid thank you very much indeed to all of you Come